everyone. Thanks for joining. Uh, so my name is my name is Atofa and I am an associate machine learning scientist at AME. Um, and today I'm going to talk about computer vision in healthcare. So this is the agenda that we are going through. Uh, first, I'll give you a quick introduction and in, uh, some high-level objectives, and then I, uh, I'll talk about some computer vision tasks uh, and uh, following applications. Um, and finally, we have the challenges and the future of computer vision. All right, um, so let's just start with the main question, why computer vision matters in healthcare. Um, as you may all know, uh, healthcare is a critical uh, sector because it literally could be a matter of life and death. So the ability of computer vision to digest a huge amount of data, um, make sense of it, uh, and spot patterns. Um, so it so give us enough reasons that how it can help in this uh, in this field. So you can see some objectives here. Uh, first is computer vision can help you know improving uh, diagnostic and treatment uh, effectiveness um, and um, you know a large caseload and uh, lack of medical history sometimes uh, may increase the uh, um, possibilities for human errors and computer vision can help doctors to detect and diagnose diseases more quickly more accurate and a bit fewer errors Next is fast and easy information analysis. Um, so computer vision can analyze a large number of images um, quickly, and as it, this is so helpful uh, to you know, ease medical procedures and also make them accurate. Uh, next is fewer accidents and safer surgeries. Um, so computer vision uh, can help um, you know, medical facilities monitor safety to reduce um, accidents and injuries, and also it can help um, doctors to perform less invasive surgical procedures. Um, next is uh, computer vision um, can reduce the total um, cost of healthcare by, uh, by reducing the need for uh, manual expensive procedures and labor works. Um, also, patients uh, will receive more uh, accurate and faster care, so um, it also reduces the need, um, you know, for uh, hospital admissions and insurance costs. Uh, and finally, um, computer vision accelerates healthcare research for new diseases and pandemics like COVID-19. Ready? So let's see what is computer vision. Um, so it's simply a sub-branch of artificial intelligence and machine learning, uh, and it means that study of visual data. And, you know, we have different types of medical images, like X-ray, CT, MR, and so on, so computer vision can help, definitely help. Um, so it's usually, uh, in a, you know, used with uh, high-tech cameras and sensors to uh, extract uh, and visualize information in a way that they are useful for a variety of applications. Um, in the right, you can see a simple comparison, a comparison between human vision and computer vision. In this example, let's say that the doctor looks into the patient's um, chest radiograph, and then the brain interprets it as a lung cancer. Uh, in the other way around, computer vision does the analysis to you know, conclude it as a lung cancer. But uh, compared to human vision, it may only take a few seconds to, to conclude it. Um, but uh, it's not as simple as it looks. So there are lots of challenges in this field, and that's why AI and uh, computer vision, they are all used as doctor's assistant, not doctors. All right, so let's move to the com main computer vision task and start with the uh, object recognition, which is a hard for variety of applications in healthcare. So usually uh, object recognition uh, includes three main tasks. Um, tasks. Uh, the first one is object segmentation, which means grouping people, <laughs> pixels, sorry, <laughs> grouping pixels to meaningful area. Um, as you can see here, there is the abdomen CT example, and automatic uh, segmentation delineates uh, 
organ area. Uh, for example, you can see uh, the segmentation of liver, kidney, pancreas, and spleen here. All right. Next task is object detection, which means putting bugs, uh, bonding bugs and bugs around objects uh, to show where the objects are in the image. As an example, you can see a thyroid ultrasound image with a detected nodule in the isthmus area here. All right. Next is object classification, which means each object belongs to each category. Here you can see two skin legend images with classification results. Uh, one is highly um, possible to be malignant, and the other one is highly benign. Already, but uh, computer vision is going beyond object uh, recognition in healthcare. For example, image registration, which means um, you know systematically putting separate images into a common form of reference. Um, so their, the, the information they contain can optimally integrated or compared. Um, and as an example, you can see a brain tumor registration here. Next is image reconstruction, uh, which as its, show, its name shows, uh, it means uh, you know, obtaining high quality images um, to so having a more constructive and useful uh, you know, image for the human observer. Uh, so there are two uh, forms of uh, image reconstruction, one 2D and one 3D. As a 2D example, you can see uh, uh, removing aliasing from MRI brain. And for, it, for the 3D one, I put the you know, 3D reconstruction of knee, knee from X-ray images. All right. Next is denoising and enhancement, uh, which is a, a, an essential pre-processing step for many applications. Uh, and you can see a chest CT denoising as an example. Next is generating synthetic data, uh, which is super helpful, especially for data-driven and deep learning models. Uh, you know, because of lack of uh, medical data and you know, skewed class uh, distribution. Um, in many medical areas, there is a need for uh, some synthetic, uh, highly realistic images to use. Um, so as an example, you can see a synthetic skin legend compared to the real ones. All right. So let's move on to the, some popular application and start with pharmacy automation. So computer vision can help in automating the prescription ordering. Um, so basically, it can uh, use OCR to extract information from prescription image. Next, uh, computer vision can help doctors to you know, detect and diagnose tumors and cancers. Usually, uh, computer vision models are trained through machine learning and deep learning. Uh, with the data of cancerous and healthy tissues, let's say. Um, and yeah, it can help to uh, make the process more accurate. Next is the, one of the most common and popular one, which is a better image analysis. So as I already mentioned, uh, so the, the computer vision ability to uh, recognize patterns, um, you know, it, it helps uh, it helps doctors to detect and, uh, you know, uh, also in the process of treatment. Also, it can help a lot. Next is surgical guidance. Computer vision is used uh, to guide uh, surgeon doctors during the surgical procedure by using the cameras enabled by machine vision. Uh, and also by improving and developing, you know, surgeon robots this day, the surgi surgical procedure would be less, uh, uh, you know, tiring and more accurate uh, for doctors. Next is reduce patient mix-ups. Uh, so which one? Patient misidentification is a, you know, a common issue in healthcare, um, and it can, um, you know, results very dangerous consequences uh, for, for both patient and also the healthcare provider. 
So, uh, so computer vision face recognition can help in this uh, situation. Um, basically, accessing to personal information by uh, face recognition uh, can also improve the uh, privacy and also, uh, you know, control system. Next is workplace safety. Um, so computer vision um, can help, you know, uh, accept uh, for the potential incidents uh, and, you know, alert relevant authorities when needed. Uh, also computer vision, uh, the surveillance system can track uh, if a staff uh, use appropriate uh, equipment and procedures. Next is uh, smart operating facilities. Uh, computer vision can automate the uh, recording process of uh, uh, surgical procedures that they may involve repetitive uh, and you know, error-prone tasks. Uh, and also sometimes a surgeon forget uh, a, a surgical instruments inside the patient's body, so computer vision can track the, the surgical instruments for yeah, avoiding this issue. And finally, um, computer vision can help in investigation and uh, you know testing in new treatments. Uh, for example, a computer vision system can do uh, better, I mean, more accurate uh, and less biased uh, cell counting compared to human uh, workouts. All right, uh, so let's talk about the challenges in this field and start with the most common one, which are data related challenges. Um, first, is, uh, finding uh, you know high quality images is always a tricky part, especially for using computer vision and machine learning models. Um, so uh, basically, uh, you know during the acquisition of uh, of Im medical images, they usually suffer from one or more issues. For example, low contrast, low resolution, high level of noise you know, geometric distortion and this type of thing, uh, and also the, the sensitivity, sensitivity nature of um, medical images makes it more difficult to collect, and even if we collect, we need to make sure the data is valid, reliable, and, and accurate. Um, so it comes to the next challenge, which is data annotation and cleaning. So sometimes more than 10,000 images are required for training the computer vision model. Um, and uh, so it could be very time consuming and more expensive, um, even when automated. Um, and you know what? Uh, the annotation process is different from annotating non-medical images uh, because only an expert has the knowledge to do that. Um, and also, even between experts, sometimes they don't agree each other about a label. So it, is, it could be super confusing and make a bias and error in the data. Uh, next challenge is data drift, uh, which is because uh, data is generated in a non-stationary environment with uh, you know, shifting patient populations. And also, there are difference uh, between sites uh, in terms of uh, technical um, equipment. For example, different hospitals may use different uh, uh, lab equipment or assays or you know code definition. Um, so this also results a distribution, a shifting distribution in the data, which uh, which reduces the rel uh, reliability. Um, let's next. Challenge is uh, lack of metadata. Uh, so usually databases are not uh, complete in terms of you know fully tracking patients, all the patients' pathways, um, and it may increase by you know inconsistency in the data. Uh, and finally, data privacy and availability, uh, which is a very prominent prominent uh, concern, especially when it comes to the healthcare uh, industry. Um, usually patient uh, data includes sensitive information, for example, uh, medical histories, identity information, payment information, and these sort of things. Um, so uh, privacy enhancing technology must be taken to uh, avoid data leakage. 
there are also other challenges in this field. For example, uh, the highly negative impact of uh, false uh, false predictions, which may um, you know um, lead a very serious uh, kind of situation. Um, Next challenge is uh, related to metrics. Uh, so metrics don't often uh, reflect clinical applicability. For example, accuracy doesn't necessarily clinical efficiency. Um, and also sometimes a metric is not completely understandable by many doctors or clinicians. Uh, next challenge is accidentally fitting confounders versus a uh, true signal. So highlighting unknown uh, confounders by uh, computer vision models um, may increase the uh, you know gener generosity issue. Um, so from my experience, for example, uh, my model was more likely to detect uh, and classify a thyroid nodule as, uh, as malignant. Um, when the input data included a ruler in, uh, inside the, the image. And it was only because my, in my training data set, most of the cancerous cases um, include that uh, ruler in them. Next is lack of interpretability and trust. You know, in the healthcare setting, there is a demand for models that they are not only well performing, but also they are, you know, explainable, transparent, and trustworthy. Um, so, although that the current models are perfect and have shown that impressive results, but they are not still able to completely, ex you know, explain the decisions. Uh, in a more understandable way, please. All right. So as you know, the challenges you may get the future. Uh, let's start with that. Taking a human-centered approach. So as Fei Fei Li said, uh, it's a key to advancing the state of the art of computer vision in healthcare, um, which means showing you know doctors or nurses how to how, how they detect and diagnose. Uh, the process, well, it's a key to successful adoption of AI-based uh, solutions. Um, another thing is just overcoming data challenges, as I mentioned, identifying and reducing unintentional biases and unfairness, improving generalizability, identifying data drift practically and updating models, um, improving interpretability and explainability, and developing reliable metrics. So the type of messages are uh, computer vision, AI, machine learning, deep learning, they are all very life-changing um, and they are making the uh, world to a better place for humans. And AI won't replace doctors and applications are not a threat to doctors. It's exactly opposite. They're trying to help them uh, to enhance the quality of clinical decision making. Um, and the last one is doctors who use AI, especially in the future, will definitely replace with those who don't. Thank you. Yeah. Um, thank you. I actually was a graduate student uh, a couple of months ago, and I was working with medical image segmentation. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. I did a thorax CT segmentation. It was interesting. Uh, one thing I'd like to ask from your experience is, I also went through a couple of the challenges that you mentioned. That's cool. yeah. yeah. So I had a bit of a problem with metrics, especially explaining my metrics, which were F1 score to the radiation oncologists that I was working with. So for that, from your experience, have you changed your metrics? Have you used new metrics for image segmentation? And how do you communicate them to the medical expert? Do you have any insights on that? Thank yeah, you. for sure. Um, so that for the, the F1 score is usually for, for detection, not for segmentation. And it's a trade-off, you know? Uh, it, it depends that you are more caring about false positives or false negatives. So for example, if so if you want to not missing any anything in the image and you want to detect all, if yeah, so basically you're more taking about uh, false negative. So you want more recall than more precision. So you may just wait, uh, wait, uh, change the metric in a way that you are waiting more on recall. 
not under precision. And for segmentation, usually, for example, using the, the intersection, the, I mean, the, the, the boundaries and the, the, the intersectional area. House turf um, distance and stuff, that's yeah. what we implemented as well. House yeah. turf distance and other segmentation so that okay. we get more information about the overlap. Exactly. exactly. You and stuff. Yeah. We use those as well to explain like how better it is. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, so the follow-up question: How did you communicate stuff like how store for IUU to the medical expert? Um, so based on my experience, usually uh, if you're working with doctors or radiologists, th these are the best way to uh, you know confirm with them. This is what you are, what, what exactly that you are looking for. What do you think? And then, based on the feedback that you are, uh, you know, getting from them, you can you can just basically you have a couple of entries, and you can decision which one is better, and you can move more weight on that. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just discuss them, and definitely we will give a lot of qualitative results as well. But again, if the data set is large, you know, how many can you print? Yeah, another thing, right, right, right. Uh, so you do have the quantitative and qualitative result, which should be consistent to each other. For example, sometimes the metric, for example, say that, as I said, the accuracy is high, but it, it doesn't show in, the, in, your, in the visual results. So there is something wrong, for sure. Yeah. Also, is there a difference in your data set or your experience as well compared to if there's a non-medical data set? Because from my experience, the same metric is just lower, like the baseline is lower, so your improvement of even a 3% is low. But whereas it's the same thing going on with a different data set like for sure. you know, human detection, they're getting like exactly. 98% for sure. or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It will increase. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's different. It's just different. Um, but usually uh, you, they are using the same metric. But yeah, you need to confirm that this is what, exactly what you want. And for sorry, I have a lot of questions. <laughs> is that okay? We have a just uh, there's. It's true. Like two medical experts might not agree that this is a tumor. Yeah. How did you solve that problem? <laughs> well, uh, we use CAPA score. Uh, CAPA score. CAPA score usually met in shows you that how much is the agreement between experts. For example, you're giving your data set to maybe challenging data that you have to two radiologists or two doctors to, to label them. And then uh, based on the results, so they don't know that the other uh, person, uh, you know, label. So based on the CAPA score, you, for example, you are, come, you are ending up with something less than 0.5%. Uh, so, which means that even the agreement between doctors is not is not high. Which means that so the model, if the if the human cannot uh, you know um, end up with the same uh, result, so how we can expect the model to do that? Yeah. So it somehow shows that it's not uh, something wrong about your model. It's just yeah. Thank you so much for your um, talk. It was amazing. So you talked about how some of the challenges with computer vision is data related, and you talked about the application of AI in that. And I was just wondering, um, would there be something in blockchain or using quantum computers in detecting things like cancer um, in patients? I would say I don't know. <laughs> so I, I don't have that experience in using blockchain and medical in the same. You know? <laughs> yeah, like the, for I think even for AI, like getting that data synthesis, would you? What kind of process is that involved in? Um, you know, for synthetic data, usually uh, it's better for non-medical tasks because it, it's not that much critical rate uh, medical ones. For example, as I as I showed, uh, the the lesion skins, for example, you can you can generate some, but you need to confirm that these are consistent with those that. Uh, a real ones, but in non-medical way, uh, you know, you can generate, uh, let's say, the data, and it's not that much, we be generated models, for example, you cannot, uh, yeah, it, it's not necessarily uh, that much critical to, yeah, having something exactly, uh, you know, realistic looking, like medical images. Did I ask yeah. you a question? Sorry, I think this one should be the, the last question. Yeah. Um, I had a question on uh, 
the data drift that you mentioned. Right. Um, how do you measure that quantitatively in your applications, and what do you actually do with the models once you realize the data drift is? The data drifted too far, mm -hmm. and what happens to those predictions mm -hmm. that were happening during the uh, data drift? Right. Uh, well, it depends. Uh, one thing that we can do is just fine tuning the model for the new distribution. For example, you have the model, but it, uh, it really depends on how many data you have uh, for the new case, for the new, let's say, population, and then you can just uh, based on that, uh, decide about how to, you know, shifting the decision of your model. Since your decisions are so critical, like you said, it's a life and death question. Right. What happens to those people uh, that were predicted exactly at the stage of the day drift? Yeah, so the challenges would be, so, yeah, I would say that the, these are some open challenges as well, that we can do something, but Every step that we take, we need to confirm that this is ref reflecting in the results. So yeah, you're right. So the challenge in medical is much more serious. So yeah, you need to confirm. Okay, thank you.